Tonight on Wise Guy. Not for nothing, Vinny. You've fallen in love with him, haven't you? I begged you, Susan. I begged you not to. I used to go home before Mel Prophet. Now I haven't been there for a weekend in more than three months. I want to be touched. I want to be loved. Terra Nova was the target. I want to know why. I want to know everything about him. I ought to blow his brains out! <laughs> Monumental waste of my talent, Eddie. You're doing a good job, Aldo. Yeah, but I could be doing things for you. You're doing what I want you to do, Aldo. I was about to be a prince in Atlantic City. Well, now you're the Duke of Beef Wellington in downtown Vancouver, which I understand from Mahoney is a lot better than what waits for you in the States. How you doing? Hey, Aldo! Hey, will you owe me something? I can buy the stove, give you in trade. I want a whole fillet this time, none of that watered down crap. I want the best for you, babe. Again. Not again. You are the emergency free clinic. Now, what about my problem? What does it look like? It looks like like peanut butter. Come on! Can I use the phone, pal? I got business to take care of, right?
Yeah, hello. Mac. Aldo? Yeah, listen, I found Vinny Terranova. I didn't know you were looking for him. You're supposed to be hiding. He betrayed us. Well, let's take care of Vinny, man. I can do something about him. Uh, I heard he slid on a bum arrest like failure to properly execute. Come on, Mac, give me something to do up here. I want permission to do something. Don't ask me that. Things change. They busted our business. Judges I had as friends are indicted. Guys below me who were supposed to be taking care of things in case of an emergency are killing each other. Kidnapping each other's babies. The government froze all my accounts. The money I had hidden, I'm giving to lawyers who don't return my calls. You're talking to a ghost, Aldo. I got cancer. Mac. I'm sorry, man. I don't want your sympathy. I want you to learn. Why don't you learn? We had everything. It wasn't enough. We had to have more. Now we got nothing. Be smart, Aldo. Forget about tearing over. Try to live a life. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm sorry that you're sick, Mac. Listen, Mac, do me a favor, get in touch with my family and let them know that I'm okay, right? Mac? Ain't you talk to your family? Fed's got everybody bugged. We don't have one of those hidden phone lines like you got. Aldo, uh, <laughs> you know, these federal uh, charges, uh, there, there were a lot of pressure on us old guys. Oh, no, we, we know it goes, goes with the territory and all like that, but uh, when it happens and they're playing with a pat and, uh, well, it, it does funny things to your veins and arteries. Yeah, that's like why you're sick. Yeah, well, me and, and your father. He succumbed to the pressure, Aldo. Uh, he had a heart attack. He's dead, Aldo. I'm sorry. When? Two weeks ago. I thought you knew. My father. Listen, Aldo. You're gonna have to start living your own life now. Just forget about the past. It drags you down. Forget it, okay? Yeah. Good. Goodbye, Aldo. I'm down here, my wife, she's fat. You know, sex with her is like feeling up a crowd. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying about that? She's so fat, we go to the beach, Greenpeace tries to throw her back in the water. Boy, I'm telling you, Mel, this is a beautiful place you got here. It doesn't look like a boat, it looks like the Sistine Chapel. You know that? There's a place, the Sistine Chapel. Took Michelangelo seven years to get the ceiling painted, okay? The guy must have the same landlord I do. Huh? <laughs> same land? Stay with it, folks, it's a long voyage here. I love this guy. Oh, you're killing me, stop. <laughs> Oh, God. Hey, you want to come to dinner? Are you buying? Am I huh? buying? Yes, I'm buying. What? I'm going. Don't you make any money in these comedy clubs? Well, if you pay me tonight, I can buy my own food, you know? <laughs> you big. Uh -huh. Oh, hey, my, my wife says it's like being on a bus. It's like being on a bus. I go 33,000 feet in there. I'm telling you, I'm dinging, OK? I'm dinging. Ding, ding, I'm out of there. Well, there you are in a $900 a day suite at the George Sink. And here I am in the Naugahyde room at the Karl Marx Pavilion. Oh, this is great.
right. When I was undercover, it was pockmarked prostitutes. How you doing? Just a second. My aunt died in a rainstorm like this, you know? <laughs> Washing her hair. Not for nothing, Vinny. <laughs> and I begged you not to, but you've done it. I ought to blow his brains out. So what are we looking at? A case for gun control. This? Who is this? Get the hell out of here. Typer, we go into OR. Doesn't matter. You won't notice. Hi, uh, I'm Roger Lococo. I'm head of security for profit. Can I come in? You're not going in there. I don't care whose security you're in charge of. Evidence disintegrates in milliseconds. Now, the sooner that room is given a forensic combing, the greater the likelihood of catching whoever it was who tried to assassinate Mr. Prophet. You get off this floor immediately, or you'll be arrested. I'll be back. You do that when a ranking detective is on scene. Yeah. Got it. Size nine. Never been out of the box. Never been touched. I also need two pair of black over the calf socks. I'm in a hurry. Please don't open the box. I'll be right back. Give me 50 bucks for that duct tape. That's okay. 50 bucks. Thanks. Profit's private security has been bugging us about getting into the room. Is he still up there? I don't think so. Well, if he comes back, send him to me.
back again. Security guys here. You are Roger Lococo, head of security for Mel Profit. Bad night for you, eh? No kidding. Can I come in or what? Touch nothing. Agreed. Hey, you're standing in evidence. You know who my employer is? Yeah, he's the industrialist. Meaning he's very rich. He has more enemies than we care to count. What were you doing when all this happened? I was about five feet from the victim. He was one of Mr. Prophet's bodyguards. Anything else? Like what? Like who did this so I can go home tonight? Hey, I'm not getting any sleep tonight either. My boss is very upset. So I heard. Come on, keep your hands off. Does he have to be here? OK, uh, you got to go. Can't you give me anything? I mean... Mike Can's on the line about this. Yeah, I figured. Look, look tell your boss we're investigating. Uh, Forensic will be getting back with us over the next few days. And in the meantime, uh, we'll give you what we can get, okay? Oh, uh, do you have a card? Yeah. Yeah. You tell me, what's it like working for a guy that rich? Today, it stinks. Can I use the toilet? No. I can't handle this schedule. With you and Vinny on a three-hour time zone lag, I don't know if I'm coming or going. You're both late checking in. My nephew's three hours late. He's been shot. He's been in OR for five hours. And you're just phoning me now? What's the prognosis? Nobody's smiling. What can I do to support you? You can get our best forensics to back up the Canadians. I have a call on just your grass. I wanted to meet me at BC Mercy Hospital, but he hasn't phoned back yet. You can follow that up. Yeah, I can do that. Damn it, Frank. I don't know if I can ride this out at the hardware store. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Mr. McPike? Uh, Uncle, I gotta go. I'll let you know as soon as I can. Lilla Warfield, I'm with State. Nice to meet you. Where's Chuck? Mr. Shigras is on medical leave. What's wrong? I was just getting used to him. It's a chronic thing. Nose candy? That's a shame. Preliminary forensic findings are being rushed at the request of the embassy. This remains a little sticky since our man is a citizen only and requesting a rush tends to raise eyebrows. Ms. Warfield, no offense, but I don't care what gets raised. And right now, Vince's cover couldn't mean less to me. A man among moles. How'd you last this long in the system? I want these windows bulletproofed. Mel, we should liquidate everything. Oh? Oh, and then what? 
you'd settle down and raise a little passel of stickball players? I'd wither away into a melancholy memory. Why can't we live normal, boring lives? We can do anything. Why can't we do that? What would we miss, huh? We would be defenseless. I will never forget what that's like. God, I feel like my skin is being stretched from the inside. Thousands of razor teeth little mice are gnawing their way out of me! Let me get you something, Mel. I don't want elixir. I want you. I want to know that I'm a part of you. We're locked together, complete. Where's Roger? Coco, you scared the pants off me. Please, Herb, don't make me sick. What is it you want? I need a full spectral analysis ASAP. What's in here? Two size nine valleys and a rear view mirror from a Mercedes Benz. Is this related? I need a breakout of all component material not inherent to the shoes, the duct tape, the black socks, the rear view mirror, and cardboard. I need to know what I'm standing in, Herb, and I need to know it now. And I need to know, is this related to the assassination attempt on Mel Prophet? Uh, that was no assassination attempt on Mel Prophet. Those bullets hit home. What makes you think that? You don't use a high-powered rifle and accidentally hit the same non-moving target twice. Terra Nova was the target. I want to know why. I want to know everything about him. your face. I don't want to lose a good thing. Uh, excuse me, doctors. Mr. Terranova. He lost a lot of blood. His heart stopped beating. Now, he is not out of the woods yet, but nothing vital was hit. See, when the heart uh, pumps as much donor blood as the blood it produces, we can't say with any statistical certainty one way or the other. Go home and rest. Yeah. I'm turning these lines over to AG. I don't know. Maybe a week. I feel this emptiness right here. I see your eyes holding him. An emptiness tears at my heart. I love you, Mel. 
I love you. You want to go see him? Yes. My fallen warrior. it like so close to death you have my sister's heart and I would curse you if it were not for the abyss when you look over does it beckon I believe that death is whatever you want it whatever you want it to be if you expect heaven or hell, you'll get it. I expect nothing. I pray for you. To return from the edge. I can't live with my sister in love with an assumption. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't stay awake, Will. Send up some coffee. Would you like anything? Asbach Geralt. Asbach Geralt, German liqueur. Asbach Geralt, uh, German liqueur. Yes, sir. Thank you. The preliminaries: forensic, pathology, toxicology. The assailant is B positive, type from bloodstained broken glass. Mr. Prophet's security returned fire. The carpeting by the window shows a high concentration of dead animal fats and oils, mostly steer, but also goat, rabbit, and bison. Gum sugar, food dyes, red, yellow, green, and preservatives associated with candies. We have an assassin that travels with a refrigerator. You are exhausted, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. I'm exhausted. I'm spent. We are looking for a man. <laughs> My back. Relax. Who works in a butcher store with at least a sideline specialty in exotic meats and probably sells candies or is addicted to sweets. Three stores in this area fit the profile, and from the BC Health Department, I have a list of current employees. Look in the back. Well, I have that. It's okay. Thanks. 25 people. This is a list of probable suspects. Very astute. Well, let's go. We ought to be able to cover those by ourselves. Frank. <coughs> Frank. It's after midnight. Well, I guess that keeps till morning. Would you like to try some of this? Very 
nice. I don't think this is a good idea, Lilla. What do you mean? I just can't bear my soul to you. Sorry, Frank. Lilla. Lilla. Please don't take this as a personal thing. I used to go home before Mel Prophet. Now I haven't been there for a weekend in more than three months. I noticed strains beginning to show. I'm hurting in places I don't want to hurt. And Vince. Vince, you know. I stood right here buying a hamburger when he took it. And I looked out there, and there he was, in the blood and the pain. You know, I had just been bitching about how lucky he had it. And my wife left me. I hadn't talked to her in a week. We kept missing each other. This morning, I got a recording telling me that the phone had been disconnected at the customer's request. She put my dog in a kennel and took my kid to her mother's. Now, you tell me where the hell that's at. My dog is 13 years old, and he's going to stay in a kennel till I get back or I exceed my credit card limit, in which case, I don't have any idea what happens to him. Now, Vinny's dying, and she tells me I'm doing this to her. Actually, your mother tells me, because she won't talk to me. She says that if she were dying, I'd say, go ahead and go on without me, hon, because I have no idea why I'll be home. Oh, here I am, standing here in my nightie, telling this to a practically absolute stranger. A very nice stranger. Because, because, Lilla, I want to be touched. I want to be loved. Because, because I'm an ass. The road stinks, Frank. Life out of a suitcase is hollow and lonely. Yeah. It's as lonely as the grave out there, Frank. She'll feel that the minute she steps out to dinner without you, she's probably feeling it right now. It's been a year for me, Frank. A year of fear and lonely nights. I'm dying to make love with you. Listen, I work in a meat market. No offense. You're a treat I can only afford once in a while. I told you. I hey, look, like... I heard from Daddy you paying groceries, huh? Yeah. Look, I'm starving, Aldo. A week's worth of groceries, please. I'll do anything for you. Anything? Yeah. Look, I got feel-good lotions and potions in my place. I'll have you speaking in tongues. Nobody will do you like me. You got like Moscow. Roger. Roger. No funny business, Roger. I have angina. You're so full of it, Herb. You know, you take advantage of your position. You use it to be cruel to me. That doesn't go unnoted, understand? You're a beautiful person, Herb. What have you got? 
Should be a piece of cake for you. You're looking for a butcher. What? It's in the report. Everything's in the report. Try reading. Your business is reading. My business is fulfillment. Save me some overtime, pal. What's the bottom line? Probability is the guy's working for one of three butcher shops in Vancouver. There's a list of 25 employees. DataNet highlighted the most likely by demographic definition to effectively use a long-range rifle at night. Four names and current or most recent addresses. That it? One more thing. No more favors. Excuse me? I have my tricks, too. Step back and release it, Herb. Step back and release it! I don't like these little forays from Mel Prophet. Me, I'm putting myself at risk. And all you're doing is showing off. So what? Well, I don't like to be used. I especially don't like to be used by you. Why, that's the balance of life, Herb. The ebb and flow of the universe. You owe, I collect. You collect and collect. Well, end of the line on this debt. No more demands. This is the last favor you call in like this. I don't think so, Herb. I am the conductor on this train. I will say when the ride is over. Aldo Baglia, your time is up. I think fine. Let's look at this chart. You move and you're 
dead. Now drop the rod. Turn around real slow. It's a little hard for me to do them both at the same time, Frank. Uncle. You're tall. I'm also losing my balance. Would you mind handing me my walking stick? And you feel secure enough to put the gun away? Why didn't you tell me you were coming out here? I covered all my bases before leaving. I didn't want to argue about it. I didn't need to be told there was nothing I could do. There's nothing you can do. I just said I didn't want to be told that. He's not looking too good, is he? He's gonna be fine. Aren't you, man? Huh? It's your Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike. Nurse! He's awake. I'll call a doctor. He's awake. <laughs> good. Identification of a print taken in the hotel room. Come on. A man by the name of Aldo Baglia. Aldo. Which store is it? A federal shield has no authority here. I'm not going to have a policy argument with you. I will call the Justice Department, arrange for extradition papers to be drawn up, and the Canadians will pick them up. Frank! You're going to end up in jail! This, babe. Man, you are this ugly. Excuse me, sir. Does Mr. Aldo Redding work here? Who are you? I'm with the bank. Mr. Redding's applied for a loan. We're having a tough time tracing his line of credit. A loan? Has he lost his mind? And there he is. Aldo! Aldo! I know you're trying to kill Vince Terranova. What I don't know is why. Now you're gonna tell me, right? Joke, Roger. Uh, you're the joke, Vince. Prophet's so depressed that he wasn't the target of an assassination that he's locked himself in his room and he won't come out. It's 
great. Guess that means I have to give this good luck charm back. Hey, that's no charm. That's magic. Prophet voodoo. Yeah. Yeah. Don't take it so lightly. A man has an IQ of over 200 and he prays the hat racks. You go figure it out, but don't think it's not real. I've seen him at Ritual, lost in some blind zombie state. It's not a pretty sight. So what's with the teeth? <laughs> Things are never what they seem, are they, Vince? Imagine Aldo Baglia slipping in grease. Should have seen the look in his face as he went over the side of the building. Ah, life is full of surprises, isn't it, Vince? I bet you have a few surprises for me. I know I have a few surprises for you.